Hello, movie lovers. Well, it's been a while since I've seen you guys. Um, I think we went live a few weeks ago around December 7th. Anyways, so I have a special guest with me tonight, guys. I am interviewing the screenwriter, writer, the king of entertainment, Mr. Pharaoh Harrington. Okay, and we're going to speak with him, guys. Let's get ready. <laughs> Hello, Pharaoh. Welcome Hello. to uh, Movie Lovers Unite, Rossi Talks. Aloha. This is the king of entertainment. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Pharaoh, I'm going to let you tell the people something quick about yourself. Let them know who you are. Well, my name, well, <clears throat> my name is Pharaoh Tathamon Harrington. I am a screenwriter or writer in this case. I am 29 years old. And yeah, that's the quickest way I can go. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, guys. Um, Pharaoh is not only a writer, um, he does some acting. Um, don't you direct also, Pharaoh? I mean, you do yep. a little bit of, he's the king of entertainment, guys. So he does yes, a I little do. bit of everything, okay? Yes, um, so really quick, guys, I met Pharaoh on the set of um, Hidden in Plain Sight. Um, I played Sarah. Um, Pharaoh actually was there uh, to help out with everything. He also, um, what you sit in, he was uh, he, he sat in the car to be the driver at some point. And I was lucky to meet him through a friend named Eric Wells, who we will soon have on the show as well. Um, remember, Eric couldn't make it here a couple of weeks ago because they are actually filming. He was on set and he also works with Pharaoh. He told me about Pharaoh, that he was a screenwriter and he writes a lot of the stuff that the projects that they do and they have really awesome projects, projects guys. And I'm gonna let Pharaoh tell you guys about that in a little bit. But anyways, I met him on set and was just his aura, just a good person, always so kind. And then when I found out he was a writer, I was like, okay, there we go. He's the guy that's responsible for the movie clips that Eric um, would share with me. So that's how we know each other, guys. And um, he is now friend of the channel. And we're going to convince him to come back and review some stuff because we are reviewing Let the Right One In. And this guy knows about the book the movie the first one the second one he knows a lot about it and mm -hmm. the actors okay so this is a movie guy so pharaoh let's start off um with something fun christmas the other day mm -hmm. so as a kid what was the gift that you just had to have for christmas what was oh uh, oh man i i ain't gonna lie i was a <laughs> i'm a huge godzilla 98 fan i love godzilla 98 so like the biggest thing i wanted as a as a Christmas present was like the, the entire gear, like the, like the backpack, the, sh the shirt. I did have the shirt and the backpack. I did also have the, this big blow up doll as a kid, but, it, but, it, and I used to like fight it all the time, but then it, but it died. <laughs> he killed it. He killed it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was a, I was a Barbie girl. So anything Barbie for me was like my thing. I love Tonka trucks. I, I loved um, RC cars, love that type of stuff. Um, what did you do for Christmas though? Did you have a good Christmas? Do you do a lot? Like, you know, I don't do much. I'm, I'm just a laid back chill guy. I'm a Sigma, I'm a Sigma male. So I basically okay. like, I, I like to sit back, just relax, hang out with a little, little bit of friends and stuff like that. I wish I could have went to Iowa with my family, but you know, I wasn't able to this year and you know, I'm actually, I was happy to be here, stay here in California. So. Okay. Okay. So like, when did you decide you wanted to be a writer? Like, when did that, did you write as a kid? Tell us about that. Oh, man, that, that is a good question. Uh, so that question is, is always answered with the best way of saying, six-year-old me watching movies, playing with toys, being creative and using my imagination. I used to have an imaginary friend as a kid. So when I got older, I pretty much was told, hey, get rid of your uh, imaginary friend and stuff like that. And I was told that at around seven. Oh, so wow. I was like, I was like, oh man. And I felt bad, but you know, my I had such a broad creativity that I said I wanted to keep the character. So I ended up trying, I ended up trying to create ideas for him. And and when I started creating like all these other ideas, which were mimicking like other shows like Power Rangers, uh, Megas XLR, I was a huge, I would, yeah, I'm a huge nerd, cartoon nerd and everything like that. I started just making his own idea. And then his own idea came in my head one day because I'm a huge fan of anime. Mm -hmm. 
and I just made an anime for him and it's pretty good. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. No, that's really awesome. Um, let's see. So you 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 probably played video games. Yes, I did. Okay. I, yep. I stopped I stopped playing video games at 13 and I just watch other people play them because it's like uh I, yeah, I, I, I just couldn't I just couldn't stick to it. I just couldn't stick to sitting down hours a day just playing a video game mm-hmm. and knowing I can write I can write a story that basically right. pretty much will be laid out for a video game. So I was like right. I can watch other people do it, but I'm I'm like, you know, I like watching other people do it, but you know, me, I would play it once in a while. The only games I like uh, or a game I like is like Call of Duty or Call of Duty Ghosts Advanced okay. Warfare. The really good ones. So. Okay, <laughs> the really good ones. Yeah, yeah I lo- I, we we love games here on this channel. I'm a huge video game player. Like you said, don't have time to sit all the time. But when I do, I sit and play some games. Oh, yes. Okay. I, absolutely. And I love shooters. I, right now I'm playing um, freaking um, The Division 2 online. I, mm. I've never played online, playing that online and absolutely loving it. But as far as your writing, though, so... Your first writing, you said you you did that as an imagine. You know, you had imagination friend, imaginary friend, which a lot of us do, and it's mm-hmm. horrible when you kill that for a kid at seven mm-hmm. years old. You know, yeah. um, but you wrote about anime. W- w- where did you go after that? I mean, did you continue to stick with the writing? I mean, well, obviously you did because you're still writing. But mm-hmm. when, at some point, did you know this is going to be a career thing? Like, I really want to do this. Uh, so that one, that question right there, that definitely came up about around when I was 18 and literally I was just on the path of trying to be a filmmaker because as a kid, I said, I wanted to be a filmmaker. So my first, my first dream was to become an, uh, was to become an engineer, but I pretty much was horrible at math. So <laughs> I just said, you know, I'm going to stick to this. And, you know, it was a teacher who told me to be a writer too, because my imagination was so broad. I just made up so much stuff. Wow. So after that is like around 18 i started really diving into the real aspect of what i really want to do in this field and what i chose to do was basically become a writer and when i said i wanted to be a writer i remember all the ideas i was writing down as as a kid through through high school to now and it's like yeah that decision was made as soon as i said hey i'm gonna turn my imaginary friend into an anime let's go (laughs) So like with your with your parents, I mean, did they have a dream for you? You know, have some parents want you to go to school and be a doctor or a lawyer or something because they tend to look at, you know, we as artists, as dreamers, you know what I mean? Like get your head out of that and go do something for real, you know? Um, And I know that it's a small percentage of us that 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 make it because we're willing to, you know, let everything what everyone else says and let that go and just go for it. So what did your parents think about that? I mean, when did you? Did they know you were like that, you know, a writer? Yeah, they uh, they knew I was very extremely creative. They were a little embarrassed about it because I was always in public doing things. <laughs> but um, they they were supportive to an extent. Uh, there was always the belief in the plan B. You know, what if this doesn't work and everything right. like that? You know, what are you? What is your? What is your opposite goal if this doesn't go the way you go through? And I'm. You know, as an adult now, I'm just like, you know, I made the right decision because right. there is no plan B. Once you make this decision, especially in this field, once you make a decision to do filmmaking or become a writer and stuff like that, there's really no turning back. So if you right. choose to turn back, that is your failure from that point on. Right. And I said this right here was the reason why I am just said, go. Just my mind was like, go, just just, right. just go. And I just ran and took that leap and. That's yeah. So, right. yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have siblings? Yes, I do. I have three sisters and two brothers. The brothers are twins. Wow. Um, my sisters are one's actually I think three years three years younger than me. Another one's about the same age as my brothers, and the other one, this the baby sister is about to be thirteen. So okay, are yeah. they all creative? Uh, my brothers are my sisters. Okay. However, they're just I. They're just wherever. Right. They're, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Um. Let's see. Speaking of the 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 directing, or or making films mm. with writing, when did you decide to parlay that into like not only am I gonna write, but I'm gonna, you know, like direct or, you know. 
you know um okay <laughs> wow uh the the parlay of basically me wanting to write and turn and create movies was pretty much i'm i'm a huge fan of films and just seeing this seeing this with my eyes and hearing it just to see the people playing it um my inspirations were were just just as many other people's inspirations you know um will smith and brendan fraser are like my two favorite actors that i can watch movies on and i have fun with it and that's what made me really want to do more uh so when i wanted to go down that path it was like my writing i wanted to see them come to life so every time i would write something on paper my imagination is like hey do you see this as a movie i can i can write it down picture it picture it with some music and the music makes sense for the idea and the character and then i'm just like yeah i i, I want to do this so i guess when i finally came to the choice of yeah i am going to stick to writing is when the directing and the acting started to come along okay um with that um with your writing what what project was the project that kind of went professional you know when you went just pro professional with when I went professional mm -hmm. uh, hmm that's a good question well there's a there's a bunch of them there because a lot of my ideas are like overly spread big budget hollywood stuff okay. so i so i had to learn to take a step back real quick and learn to write short films okay. and once i learned the right short films which really is not that long ago i technically wrote a short called uh sell your life and i was trying to literally pitch it for the access uh place called sacramento um they they turned it down but it but it was a great opportunity for me to um just get in there and everything like that and mm -hmm. sell your life is a horror that basically is about a cell phone that if a guy finds a cell phone so when the battery began to die so does your so does the lifespan and oh no way yeah so that was so yeah that was that was the trick of the of the idea and it's been it's been i've been trying to get that off the ground for a minute but i filmed it once uh when i went to this uh, film program and you know i haven't heard from it since and i can just say all i'm right now doing has been just shooting the other ideas such as okay. uh it uh okay. <clears throat> my next one called my next one coming up is called hot zone uh and we just did looters and you know, that's when the professionalism came into play. Okay. I wonder if Looters was the one that Eric showed me because he showed me a, a short film and it was it was four guys. Um, it was shot beautifully. Is that Looters? Is that the yeah, one with the that's Looters? Yeah, that's okay. Looters. Okay. He showed me that. That was the first thing I saw of yours. And Eric showed me that a short, short film. And I remember watching that and it being so short, the characters were there was one guy that was just hilarious. He was absolutely funny. <laughs> yeah. um, you guys gathered around the car and trying to decide where where do we go from here, basically. Mm -hmm. And also the way it was shot, it was professionally done. I told Eric, I want to know more about those characters. I want to know more about that guy. I want to know more about that guy. It was really good. And that's the first one I saw. So you did that. It's I loved it. And I would love to see a full version of Looters. Oh, um, yeah yeah you did a really good job um so what's your process like when you're writing what process do you go through because i understand like some people do a a, a board where they write ideas out you know um what what's your process that you go through if you have a process my process is pretty much letting my imagination roar okay. and i say that and, and i'll take you through it because with this process so many and there's so many different processes for different writers so writers can write however they want to write but with this it's it's a um for my process i pretty much just say okay i have this idea i'm gonna write it into bulletins on my notebook or in my phone notepad or my computer notepad and, or google docs and i'm just gonna let that marinate until it becomes a full-blown like until i see the movie until i'm able to see it and then once i fully am able to see it i then go and just go like okay these characters who is these characters i just write out um the character i want what type of character is he or her and just 
just play with it from there. And then I got the premise and then I start writing the story and then I write out the outline. And then after that, I just write like a spec script, which is like a five page of short, you know, to see if the idea is going to work and we use it to shoot like as a skit. And then that's my, uh, <laughs> okay. my process there. <laughs> okay. Um, are, are you one of those guys? Like, you know, how some comedians, they can, they'll wake up out of their sleep and they're like, Oh my gosh, that's a good idea. Good joke. I'm going to write that. Does that happen to you? Yeah, yeah, I have actually had that just recently. Um, I was just working on another. Uh, it's actually a kids, a kids book, a kids, a kids movie idea I have, and it just be like, oh, I, I woke up like, oh, okay, I gotta write this down. And I just be like, okay, where's my phone? Like, or or notebook, and just go like, okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> write down one, two, three. <laughs> okay. Um, speaking of that, the the the, what are you in many genres? Like what? You see, you mentioned horror films, but what other genres do you do you write? I, honestly, for a lot, I write popcorn movies. I okay. love popcorn films. Tell us what popcorn is. I've never heard of that, so please so, tell us what that is. Of course. So, what a lot of people don't know about popcorn films or what a popcorn form, film is is basically purely entertainment. It's just a movie that's just fun. It's humorous. It has no real plot or actually it has a plot, but it's just like, it's not taken too serious. And well, I love those type of films. Uh, I can give you like a list, a list of- Wait, give, I, give us some so we have an idea. Yeah. Um, if you watch Godzilla 1998, Godzilla 1998 had a great storyline, but it, it was a popcorn movie because it was just pure fun. You had fun with just seeing just the monster just destroying the city, the army trying to stop him, everything like that. The humorous like jokes coming from the adults and people like that. Um, this is considered a popcorn fault. Uh, blah, blah, a popcorn <laughs> culture film, uh, Black Panther. And okay. That was my that I love that film. I love that film. And it's like second to it is second to Godzilla. There's okay. Bullet Train, Black Adam, uh, White House Down, the first Thor movie. I have a lot of G.I. Joe, the Rise of Cobra. I mean, there's Transformers. Okay. There's okay. so much. There's so many. Uh, OK, I get that um, because I know with um um, Transformers, you know, it took me a while to watch that because I didn't think I'd like it, end up watching it, and it's exactly how you describe it. It's a movie that's just go, go, go. It's a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. Haven't seen Bullet Train, heard a lot about that, heard it was yeah, a, yeah. A, a great um, over-the-top kind of adventure shooter, mm -hmm. just a really good, so, okay, I, I get that. We, we There's another one, that, too. You know? There's another uh, popcorn movie I've just also recently seen. Um, it's called Violent Night. It's a Christmas movie. It has David yeah. Harbour in it. That yeah. is a great, great popcorn movie. And okay. the elements in that was like, oh yes, I, it was like Die Hard meets yeah. Home Alone. I was like, that's beautiful. That is very beautiful. Well, okay, then I then would and don't laugh at me, guys, but I am a Sharknado fan. Okay, what? I, okay, even though I I know, okay, everyone laughs at me. <laughs> But hey. I've seen them. I've seen, I think, all four of them or five of them. And I just like the silliness of it. You know what I mean? The the B-rated stars. Would that be a popcorn movie? That would actually be a B-rated popcorn movie. Okay. That would. Okay. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of B-rated <laughs> popcorn movies like Piranha. If you've seen Piranha. Oh, I, yes, yeah. I love that. Yeah, that's a popcorn movie. And, okay. and, it's, my, and it's like... Uh, Slither is another one. It's supposed to be a horror comedy, but I was like, no, that's a that's a popcorn movie too, okay. to an extent. Yeah. Okay. So you said your all time favorite movie is the Godzilla movie. Yes, the ninety eight. The ninety eight. Mm -hmm. What other movies did you did you really like growing up? And one thing, one more thing, I want you to tell them the story of why you enjoy the black and white movies and the reasons why you got into that. Oh, of course. Uh, so other films I used, I loved as a kid was literally like uh, Mr. Belvedere. I loved Casablanca. I loved uh, Gone with the Wind. It's, cra it's crazy how I can say I like that movie. Uh, Citizen Kane. I actually nice. got into Citizen Kane when I came out here in 2017. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is yeah, okay, I like this. And yeah, and those are all black and white movies. But right. what what was the funny thing about it was, um, oh, I forgot to say this other movie, the first and original Django. Um, okay. Nobody knew. 
yeah so there was a movie there's literally a movie called django that quentin tarantino you if anybody knows him he's you know his movies pulp fiction absolutely, django absolutely. And Jane and yes. everything like that. yeah yes. django on chain is pretty much a direct descendant to the mm. first django film and it actually involved an italian actor named franco Nemero. and he pretty much the movie was basically about a wanderer who was a gunslinger and he was carrying around a, a coffin and he goes to this town and becomes his protector from the Ku Klux Klan. And I was like, this is a Western. And I'm like, Jesus Lord, this is a great movie. But what got, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, it, I just love the setting of it. it. Just the story behind it was just so passionate. And I was sucked right into the movie. Like, wow, wow. But um, the story behind me, like in black and white films and in films in general, um, well, getting into those type of films too because as a kid i used to get in trouble just for just random things and it would be just like if i if i sneeze the wrong way i, I would it'll be like nope you're not watching tv nothing you like anything like you to sit right here and watch what we watch and i and i'd be bored so I, one time i got in trouble with my grandmother and she loves loves turner classic movies i would turn on that oh, channel yeah. now like like a passion and watch so many black and white films to where I'm like, I can't wait till Casablanca comes on and be like, yes, I'm like great movie. <laughs> yeah, so my Grady would like turn turn on her her shows and stuff like that, like Hallmark channels, everything. Yep, and, yep. But when she turned to cl turn her classic movies, I would sit there and it'll be like a, to me when I'm in trouble and I don't go to bed until like 8.30 as a kid, I literally would sit there like watching this these these movies with her and I would be immersed in these movies while she's falling asleep in her chair, like just, okay. just just knocked out. And another movie would come on, and then I'd be immersed into that. And I, wow. it just was like it just became a love for me. And I just was right. like, oh, I love film. I love these. I love film. <laughs> right. Yeah. The best. The uh, same with me. I love the black and whites, the Turner classics. Um, mm -hmm. To sit all night and just watch those movies. I think I watched uh, a Tree Grows in Brooklyn so many times. So many times. They were just really good, and I don't you love old Hollywood, just that I, old classic Hollywood. You know, I miss I miss old Hollywood. I do, um, but what I feel like is that, and I do love old Hollywood. I right. just the only thing I'm the only thing I can say that I think I'm glad we're progressing in is just yeah. the technology, Absolutely. and that's pretty much it. But old right. Hollywood was like, yeah, everybody had yeah. a job. <laughs> right like the, the they were celebrities you know what i mean yeah. like, you know today's age we have so much technology to mm -hmm. where you can a celebrity's not it's not like it used to be you know what i mean yep. when we were kids and and when you see michael jackson or you know you see a, a certain movie you know bruce willis oh, if yeah. you saw him in person you'd flip out today right. it's just you can touch anyone, you know, you can see anyone, mm -hmm. you know, everything they're doing because of social media. Back then we had to use our imagination and wonder what they're doing because they were held just that, you know, we idolize some of them, yeah. you know? So, so many so, meetings, so many yeah, like, right? like, yeah, just, just so much stuff. They were like, I just uh, seen a movie called Babylon and okay. it, ha it has Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie in it. Right. Great film. It's a real wild, great film mm -hmm. though. But I could tell you one thing that shows how much Hollywood has changed, but it shows you so much about the industry. You would what never kind of think it's possible. Tell so, us a little bit about what I've heard about it, heard it's great, but what is it about? So you're following these, the a couple of eccentric characters. Margot Robbie and Brad Pitt are not the main characters of the film. Okay. It's okay. this uh, Latino and I forgot what his name, but his name, the main character's name is Manny. But each one of them are going through Hollywood during the time period where Hollywood was transitioning from silent films to talkies. And this was such a moment of like, how do you get into the, it basically kind of told how you get into the industry. Okay. Where if you basically go in, you can basically get in through just going to a party or lying to go into the party. Like the whole thing about fake it till you make it, you know, it's been right, told right. through so many books like Tony Robbins and, and, uh, and, uh, 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 I keep forgetting his name. He did a, he did a book. I, I love it's called um, rich dad, poor dad, but, um, yeah, Robert Kiyosaki, that's his name. Robert okay. Kiyosaki's okay. book and everything like that. You, you know, when you fake it till you make it, Robert, fake it till you make it is pretty much was that, 
whole line, like because Margot Robbie's character, mm -hmm. just a little spoiler, she she faked it all the way <laughs> to she got famous. And I was like, wow, wow okay. okay, this that yeah, yes, that works. <laughs> Speaking of uh, books, you know, although you're in movies, I mean, if you're a writer, you 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 read a lot. Who mm -hmm. are your favorite um, author authors that you, the books that you like? Your favorite writers? You know, so I I, I don't have really many uh, favorite writers. Um, J.K. Rowling is a, is is one good one, I would say. Okay. I'm more I'm more onto the screenwriting writers than okay. anything. Like Jordan okay. Peele is my favorite. Right. right. Um, Christopher Nolan is definitely my my all time favorite, okay. um, not just because of the Batman films, but when he right. but with Inception and and Tenet, right. Interstellar right. was actually really good. Um, I just I'm just a writer who just loves the the concepts of writing. But if I want to say any authors I like would be like that has influenced me right. yeah. more towards my dream. I would say like Robert Kiyosaki, Tony right. Robbins. Um, George R. F. Uh, Siobhan. Okay. It's 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 a lot of people I can really okay. Think. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Let's see. Um. I had some other questions. I had some fun questions here. Okay. Yeah. Take, yeah, take your time. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't want to miss anything, guys. You guys know I love to write notes and and read notes and all that. Um. We 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 talked about that. You know what I wanted to talk about was you mentioned you as a kid and how you were different. And being that we're reviewing and in the middle of reviewing, let the right, let the right one in. You know the little boy Isaiah. Yes. You that's when you, you talking and t telling me about you as a kid. Mm. It reminds me of little Isaiah because remember Isaiah is different. Yeah. He's not like the other kids. He's very talented. Yeah. He wants to be a magician, mm -hmm. and he gets picked on because of that. Did that happen to you as a kid when other kids, you know, you start writing as a young kid? So, yeah, it, it did. I used to be the kid. I used to be I wasn't the class clown. I was just the kid that was weird. Okay. And uh, growing up, it was different because it was just I felt like I had no friends. I wasn't connected to people. But the only reason why and the truth be told, because a lot of people don't know this about me, is that I have level one autism which is Asperger's syndrome. And nobody could tell that about me. So it's like when I tell people that they're just like, oh, you're autistic. And it's like, well, yeah, but you know, you can't tell it. But when they, it was be comments from certain people, even certain adults and, and other stuff like that, that used to get on my nerves when I hear it from certain people too. No, literally like they, they would tell my parents or a guardian or somebody that um, when you get to, when you have a conversation with me, you could tell there's something wrong with me. And it, and it, wow. and it hurts my feelings because yeah. And that doesn't make me soft, but it's like, right. the, no, still. yeah, yeah. It's just, that right there is like i have i'm a human being just like you so that right there kills me on the inside and you know I, i've dealt with so much you know stuff growing up you know i'm still dealing with it you know extreme depression anxieties you know this this is like a it's a real thing that nobody takes serious but yeah i dealt with bullying i still dealt with it as, as an adult and everything like that um i still deal with people just not understanding my my way of me viewing the world right. but it's like so much stuff i went through and the stuff that i watched and all this other stuff made my view towards the world like completely different because i believe that anything is possible so Absolutely. that's my that's my whole concept and how how do i say anything is possible i am sitting in a room especially when i'm writing and stuff like that i sit in a room and if i'm thinking the one thing that pops in my mind <laughs> And it's funny to me. I'd be like, if Godzilla was real, how are we surviving that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is that's what I'd be saying. It's like, how are you how are we gonna survive that? So Right. I honestly I like you said, I couldn't tell either. Yeah. I, you know, you're not looking for anything, but you telling me that, not not even a clue. Did did not know. Um, I myself I'm an epileptic. And I dealt with that growing up as a kid. I was diagnosed at five years old. Um, so I was always very different. Mm -hmm. um, I would, you know, have seizures at school and kids would like freak out because what's going on with her. So I had a lot of that, a lot of bullying because of that. 
So I, I did what you did, basically had an imagination and and would go and react scenes from movies that I liked because I wanted yep. to be, you know, and do that right. to escape. I didn't have a lot of friends. So mm -hmm. I, I was, you know, my own best friend or my sister, you know, because um, yeah. she too suffers from, um, you know, epilepsy. So I totally get where you're coming from. And people find it strange even as you get older and adults who you, you think have, you know, the sense of mind to know better mm -hmm. will say things to make it seem like something's wrong with you or or they speak to you a certain yeah. way as if you, because of this, you know, problem I have yeah. that I, you have to speak to me a certain way, speak to me louder. Or I, so I totally get that. Can yeah. you explain a little bit to the audience what what that is that you suffered from, your autism, to explain yes. what it is so that, of you know? Course. So as a lot of people, may not understand with Asperger's Asperger's is a is a is an autism level where I, I personally suffer from hyper focus it's hyper focus on a subject or anything and I will be talking about it for days hours years and it doesn't matter it does not bore me or anything like that and you know I've been around filmmakers a lot of people will say well because I love film i could talk about films i talk about specific films over and over again i talk about my ideas over and over again but it's mainly because it's like that's what i'm focused on that is what i'm so focused on i don't care about going out to parties if i'm invited that's cool i don't care about uh doing most things because it's just like this is my main focus this is what i want to do with my life this is what i'm pretty much putting my blood sweat tears anger, whatever else, <laughs> right, no, right. and, I'm, and I'm pushing forward. And um, and that's one thing I'm dealing with. That's with me is, and it's with anybody that has Asperger's, that they're going to be hyper-focused on right. one thing. And that's what they're going to be focused on, talking about every right. single day and dealing deep, deep into it right. from the core of their souls to everything, just, just like that. Right. I think that um, it, th that's what makes you great. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you have that and some may look at it as a disability, but look where you are. That's what yeah. makes you great because you are so hyper focused on it that you've done how many projects you've written? Like how many projects have you worked on up until this point right now? Man, I have worked on a lot of projects. I can say I've worked on, I've been helping out. I have clients too I, I work with. Um, I have a client that I'm working on her uh, script and that was just being seen by some producers. Wow. I've I've been helping out some brothers of mine, my, my own twin brothers who have ideas. They want to do anime and stuff like that and, we, and, and movies. And I say, yeah, I can help you with this. And, you know, they've been a very supportive team to um, my friends that my group, you know, we've been, Oof, man, I it's, it's, oh, it's a lot. I can't really give you a bare number. <laughs> okay. Well, how about this? How about you tell the folks what project you're working on right now? And and um, after that, if you could tell them about your brothers, the guys who I saw in the film, what you guys do, tell the, tell the people about that. Oh, of course. So the project right now, right now we're on a little bit of a vacation because, you know, it's the holidays. Right. But um, we just got done wrapping a project called Hot Zone. And that's basically about within a car garage, a bodyguard must fight a, a spy and two bounty hunters over a bag within the night that he has to deliver. And that's that's a project we just got done with. Um, and my next project that I'm working on, which is basically next year, I'm going to be working with um, some collective people from the Bay Area mm -hmm. to out to out here in Sacramento uh, and, you know, just on different projects and everything like that. I just got called upon to be on a set in in the Bay Area for wow. next week. So I'm yeah. So I'm pretty much about to hit the pavement hard again. Right. Right. <laughs> next year. So with the 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 short films that you do, Tell them how long, like you're in and out, but it mm -hmm. makes sense. Cause I saw, I saw the film that you did. It's in and out. What is it like 10 minutes? And it's yeah, up seven to 10 minutes, but it's just about five pages, maybe okay. sometimes 10, but that's the length of it. So with that is just basically, they're just spec ideas okay. and as cinematic skits, they're funny, but okay. they're, 
to be like spec ideas to say, hey, because this is our way of introducing to the world, to the industry and the world, like, hey, this is who we are. This is what we do. This is the ideas we're putting out there and everybody, you know, this is what we're standing for. Okay. So um, I would say <laughs> with that, I would I would I would say that with that it's it's a lot of work. Okay. It just comes with it just comes with a little bit of time. It just comes okay. with time and patience, you know. So how many how long did it take to do just like just one one project? Uh, how 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 long did it take? What's your process, you know, to go through that with the guys? Like how do you guys choose who's going to play this part? Like how do you do that? So with the projects, like I, I'll give you an example with Looters. Looters okay. was like our first, like once 2021 came, we said the first idea we're going to throw out in the world was Looters. And we hit the world with that. And the process was that was just basically coming up about like, hey, let's uh, get an idea for the one location, what it's going to be about, and everything like that. My process was just basically simple, just coming up with the idea. And the idea was already written. Okay. It just was like, do I want to take a chance on giving it a shot to see if it worked? And, you know, I did as a writer, you battle yourself. You, you have a lot of battling yourself and writers do that. Um, if any writer in, in this, in this world says that they don't do that, they're lying to themselves because there is moments where writers go through that, but I digress. Um, <laughs> yeah. With, with that process, I just basically just said, okay, I'm going to write it. And then it goes through my brother, I, my god brother, I call him. He's, he's a producer too. He does editing. His name is Reggie Waters. He goes and reads it. Um, he's, he does the rewriting with it too. Um, I also have Eric Qualls read it. Right. I, and they just basically tell me what needs to be changed. And I'm good with changes because the industry is going to tell you to rewrite this or they're going to rewrite it. And I'm always the guy that says, either I do it or somebody else is going to do it. And mostly if I don't do it, they're going to do it. If I let them do it, I got to trust them to do, right. do the process. Right. So that is mainly my process is just like having trust, patience, and without a doubt, just taking the leap. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So like with the, with, with looters, mm -hmm. Will that be a feature film? Like, do you do you want to do feature films? Like, what's what's your goal? What's your guys' goal? Well, I know for us, we want to make we want to be in Hollywood. We want to make the big, big time movies. We want to make the movies that basically you go to the theaters and sit, pay your money to see. That is a my goal, my dream. Ever since I was a kid, was always to see my ideas come to life, and seeing it from this point of view, it says that yeah, I can make it. Absolutely. So my bigger dream is to see my my bigger ideas become like the best thing of my life that I put my heart on time into, even if it may not look like I did. It's like, no, I'm behind closed doors writing and that's what I want to put in there. Looters for looters. I definitely see a four film franchise. I see a, a bigger I see bigger things going on with this. I'm pretty much trying to make Looters the next Ocean's Eleven franchise. Okay. okay. And that's what I want to do with that. Okay. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. Absolutely see that. When I watched it, yeah, you 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 get that. Like I said, the characters are great. The guy that you you got every type of character, but that one guy that's funny, he's just he had me dying in it. And like I said, guys, these movies that they're shooting, these are these are the quality, the cameras that they're using the writing, the acting, like it, where they decide to shoot at, the the atmosphere, mm -hmm. all of this, guys, in a seven to eight minute film. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see yourself in five years? That's a short time, but five years, a lot can happen. Ooh, in five years, I see myself writing Hot Wheels, the feature film. Oh, I see wow. myself at a Kids' Choice Awards, at a, at a a Screenwriters Guild Award. I see myself pretty much there with everybody, working with the big leads and everybody and working with up and comers too, because, you know, everybody's getting old. So it's like, you know, when the newcomers come in, you know, hey, this is, can you do this? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's see, what else do we have? Let's add some fun questions. You know what, someone wanted me to ask you just a second. Mm -hmm. Just a second, just a second, what did I just do? Remember I told you things happen when you're live? 
Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. My computer's super sensitive. Um, so some people wanted me to ask you, if you were a spiritual animal, what animal would you be? Oh, uh, well, I actually have three spiritual animals because I'm also okay. part Native American. Um, okay. but the, but I know two of them, nah, yeah, two of them are very, very close. I feel like I can be, these are my three, a tiger, a lion, and a wolf. Okay. And the tiger is the, is the, is the one that's basically like ready for anything. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but the, um, but the wolf, the wolf represents it's, uh, it's, it's three things that a wolf represents. It can represent the loner. It can represent the alpha and it can represent the omega as okay. a, which technically it, it rides alone, but it can build its own pack and everything like that. So, that's my other one and the lion well it says in my name the king <laughs> right the king yeah. absolutely yeah. um okay so i'm going to go back really quick um native american native american tell me mm -hmm. your what tribe are you what how, like yeah and where I'm, did you grow up well i am red cherokee and blackfoot um red cherokee on my dad's side my great grandmother i have a whole picture from my link for my family it it's like yeah <laughs> yeah and uh blackfoot is on my mom i grew up in iowa i am this is the land of corn and i call it the land of corn because <laughs> it's nothing but corn stuff out there i used to literally like for a job like like pick corn just to make money and stuff like that wow, and, wow. yeah so um for a lot of people who don't know, Iowa is the state in the middle next to Illinois and Wyoming and all the other states. So right. that's where I grew up at. Um, that's also known Tornado Alley. The yes. uh, city I grew up in is Waterloo. It's a small little, small, small place. And the capital of Iowa is Des Moines. Um, I've been there all my life since I was literally since I was young till I'm 18. And at 18, I just left and just took the leap of faith. Um, there's a lot of stuff not to do there. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but it is a good place that if you want to, if you're having families that you can go and pretty much just raise your family, That's but do understand that's all you're gonna do yeah <laughs> that's all you're gonna do yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did you did you leave iowa and come to sac or like is is that how that went well my journey my journey started with me going to massachusetts because um i come from a disbanded household okay. my mom and dad were divorced so and it was pretty much I was trying to get to know my dad and try to get a bond with him and stuff like that. Didn't go the way I wanted to. So we just kind of I just kind of left that alone and right. kind of then after Massachusetts, I came to California and my life kind of changed from there. And yeah. Right. Are you happy? Oh, man, I'm extremely happy. OK. Yeah. OK. Um, all right. Well, guys, um, I'm going to let Pharaoh now tell you where you can reach him at, his social media, um, if any of you guys want to work with him because he he does assist other writers, other screenwriters. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this is a guy that you want. Um, mm -hmm. He's located here in Sacramento, right? You're yes, in Sacramento. Am. Yep. Um, tell him where you can, where we can find you at, Pharaoh. Well, yes, most definitely. So first and foremost, to give you guys a good understanding of who I am and what I do. Uh, my name is Pharaoh TKE. I am a screenwriter and a screenwriting consultant. I can help you guys write your scripts. I can basically show you guys the way to write the, the format, the script, to basically what Hollywood is looking for, uh, any producer, anything like that, and what will sell and everything like that. My client I'm working with now, we're dealing with a lot of things, but we are got stuff that is selling. And where you can find me at, you can find me at my email, which is official feralcorp at gmail.com you can find me on my instagram official real pharaoh under underscore tke you can find me at pharaoh harrington at facebook you can you can find me also on youtube on feral tke and find all my next upcoming shorts and everything like that you will probably be seeing me in a lot of like short films or films coming from the bay area and out here and everything like that but um anything from that point on you know it's pretty much, hey. 
Well, Sarah, we are so happy that you came and um, you're my first interview. And I, I really appreciate you. Like you've been so great. You've been open with your time. I appreciate you coming and sitting with us tonight. And um, yeah. um, I, I definitely would love for you to come back. Um, like we said, we, you know, when you have free time, because I know you're going to be really busy, but mm -hmm. when you have free time, please hit me up. Let me know a day that works for you so we can do a movie, maybe an old film, whatever you want to do, that would be great. Yes. So um, thank you so much. Guys, um, listen, this is what's going on. Oh, wait, before I do that, Pharaoh, are there any projects that you'd like to talk about or are there any people that you want to shout out? Uh, I would like to give a shout out to all my filmmakers out there, uh, all my god brothers from Quentin Harris, Eric Qualls, Reggie Waters, my god sister Sean, Shonda Daniels, uh, Eric McCall Johnson. I also want to give a shout out to my brothers and my mom, my dad, all my family, you know, my sisters, and, all, and just let everybody know I love y'all. I have a big heart. You know, you have just been entertained by the king of entertainment. <laughs> you absolutely have. Pharaoh, the king of entertainment, he will be back, guys. Thank you for being a friend to our channel. Guys, I want to let you guys know, please like and subscribe. Um, I also have a YouTube channel that I just started, guys. You know how Facebook is. I got to wait 48 hours. So I'll put that link up. Uh, John will hook that up for you guys. Um, mm -hmm. Tomorrow, we're going to do another show because I am back from my um, Christmas, from the holidays, from working. Everything's gone back to normal for me. So I'm trying to get in and get some shows done. I owe you guys a lot of shows. So I have some special guests that are coming up in January. Um, we are going to continue. Let the right one in, guys. We're going to finish that up. Tomorrow, I have Jay Jones, who is an actor. He's going to come on. He's going to sit with me. And we're going to review episodes four and five, because remember, we're going to double up, okay? There's so much going on. Um, hopefully, we can have Mr. King come back and review an episode with us before we get done with this. And then um, for, net, for January, I have another actor coming on on the 12th. On the 11th, though, I have a very special guest, um, my little sister, Joanne McCree, Missy Joe, Missy Joe Stargazer, all of that. She's going to come sit with me because once a month, we're going to talk about, um, oh gosh, John, oh, freaking it. <laughs> the, 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 the gentleman that um, made all those teen movies in the 80s, your Pretty in Pinks, gave us the, the um, what is that? Just one of the guys. I, I, I think he gave us that, but your, your Brat Pat movies, Joanna's going to join me once a month because as kids, we used to love those movies. So she's going to join me on the 11th and we're going to rewatch and do a review of Just One of the Guys. All right. Thank you so much, movie lovers. We love you. Don't forget about my co-host. Go check out Charlie Widman. Check out Alex Haynes for A-Town Reviews. And of course, the head of our channel, Mr. John D. Gregorio. Thank yeah. you, John. Thank you, Pharaoh. Guys, we are out. We will see you next time. And uh, give me a minute, guys. You know how it goes.